Hello everybody, this is just a quick sim update and as you probably worked out from the thumbnail, uh, the sim is now available on Steam and you can get it at the address I'll put at the bottom and basically it's almost the same version, just a couple of very slight textual changes there because Steam didn't like some of the stuff I had there. But yeah, it's available as Steam. And I wanted to address a few questions which will pop up because generally speaking, I've always been, this is a free sim. And you might now be saying, ah, see, it was free and now you're trying to get our money. It's true that the sim version is chargeable and there's a reason for this. Uh, and it's mostly because Steam charges $100 for you to put something on Steam. So I thought by charging a sort of nominal amount of $1.99, I'd be able to at least get some of that money back. That said, you, I'm not expecting really to rush out and get it from Steam. If you're comfortable downloading from the GitHub site, unzipping it and running it, brilliant. The reason the Steam version exists in the first place is, is for a couple of reasons. First of which is I kept getting questions and comments from people that just found the idea of going to a website, downloading a file, unzipping it, putting it somewhere and running it, and then having to do the same thing every time there was a new version. They just found it overwhelming. And, I, you know, I'm 35 years plus as a, a programmer, so it, it it was a bit weird to me. But, yeah, not, not everybody is at the same level of using a computer. And they are much more comfortable where they can click on an application and it just does all its own stuff. So at least by doing Steam, if they've managed to get Steam installed, because Steam has a quite a nice friendly installer, they can just go to the Steam store and they can click on it and it will download and it will automatically update and stuff. So there, there are a few people that will want this. It's obviously the people that are not computer savvy, but they want to try and play it. And I didn't want to have a barrier of entry and the fact that, you know, a technical limitation would stop people doing it. So it's, it's for them guys. It's also for the people that find the updating thing a pain and they have to like know when something's updated. Cause right now you're probably having to watch a video like this or keep an eye on the GitHub page. So for people that want the convenience of knowing it's just automatically going to update, that's for you as well. And if people want to give what I would call a passive donation, i.e. like you like this, you may want to kick in a, a buck to the project or something, but you didn't want to do the Patreon, you didn't want to do PayPal. This is, if you like, a sort of passive way of donating and you get the benefit of some of the Steam stuff. However, the actual sim itself still stays free. I'm not going and, and doing Steam in a different direction and leaving the normal sim behind. It is a couple of little clicks I need to produce the Steam version versus the normal version, but it will remain the same and it will remain on GitHub for free and it remains on Steam for people that want to do all the things I've just mentioned. I have to say putting stuff on Steam was not as easy as expected. I expected the difficulty to come in the technical aspect of it because you had to do certain things to sort of make it steam aware that took 10 minutes the stuff that took many weeks was the actual act of getting it on steam to, to go on the steam store they wanted loads of different types of artwork from the game and logos and sort of screenshots and and bits and I, i'm not an artist and I, i'm okay taking screenshots but when it comes to like like where is your, you know, what was your cover art be? It's like, oh, I haven't got any. So I had to make this all up. I had to do it in different resolutions. And then once you've done this and you think you've done it, you then submit it to Steam for review and they come back five days later and decide if it's worthy or not. And in the case of this, it got rejected once because they decided that the, it's actually called the hero artwork was, was not acceptable because I, I'd used the sort of picture of me smashing through the brickwork in a quad but they said that contains a logo and your logo is supposed to float over the top if you've ever scrolled through the steam you'll notice um, there's a slight movement of the the logo over over the artwork that's that bit so I had to redo that and then I had to wait another sort of five days in the queue and then when it came to submit the code somebody from steam had to actually start it and play it and that got rejected twice both times I wish they told me in just one note it was references to uh, PayPal and uh, there was a link to a Bandcamp site for the, the guy that did the music. And they're like, you can't do that because you're taking money away from Steam. This isn't Steam Wallet stuff, this is external stuff. So those had to come out with the Steam version. And uh, that's like another 10 days. And even then when it was accepted, it's like, okay, well you have to have it on the, the store for like 14 or 10 days or something. So I had to sort of sit there twiddling my thumbs 
until yesterday when it finally got released and is available for you. So now you can download it on Steam, you can start it from Steam, um, albeit it has exactly the same functionality except you can use the Steam overlay if you really want to. So there is that, go forth and download on Steam if you want to or carry on downloading from GitHub if you want to, all is good with me. So I thought I'd just mention what's coming next and if you ever want to know, if you check on the issues page, uh, there's always a link to the bomb, um, you can see what I'm doing. I've created this tag called working on right now and it says what I'm doing right now and I, I, I've got a list of sort of my, my things that I want to do and if you ever think, hey, what about this? Why not do that? Or if you've got a bug, just add it there. You don't have to be, it doesn't mean you're part of the project, it doesn't mean you have to program it, it just means you can report a bug there or you can ask for something there. It's all good. And I do listen to people. One thing I really didn't like about OSDs was that central crosshair that right in the middle. I'm like, I know where the middle is, but enough people asked if they could have it because they fly with it. It's like, okay, I'll put it in there. Um, it, it doesn't work for me, but um, it, it apparently works for some people. It's really divisive though. You either love it or hate it, but uh, yeah, that'd be going. It might be going in next time because it's quite a, a simple, quick fix. So what I'm working on at the moment um, is the field of view, which is one of the one of the big things I've always felt it was a little bit narrow. And as I've worked on this, I've worked out that the default view we've got at the moment is about a 2.8 mil lens, which is what we used to do in FPV, but now feels a little bit narrow. And certainly you've noticed if you're coming into landing and your camera's like anything above 20 degrees, you, you won't see the landing spot if you want to practice landings. And I felt this is more difficult when going through the building and stuff like that. So I've always talked about having a shader to do this, but um, this sort of shader would be basically a full screen processing effect. And that would be a case of rendering the image, taking the image, uh, doing a post processing effect on the full image and the rendering it again, which is like, that's double the uh, uh, amount of CPU power. So I'm slightly worried because I've always tried to make this accessible to low end computers that this might be too much. So I've gone back to the drawing board and I've tried modeling the sensor size of an FPV camera and trying to reproduce what I can get there. And previously I, I've had problems with this, but I've really played about with it and I think I've got something workable. So um, I've had to do a couple of things, like I've had to fudge some of the sensor things to make it sort of look correct. And I've had to move the the virtual camera sort of out a bit because it was we were sort of sinking back and seeing too much of the arms and a motor. But I've got it so like the 2.8 mil looks vaguely the same and you can't see the props. And as you come down to 2.1, 1.8, and 1.66, you see more of the props and you see more of the landscape. And I've noticed that's much easier flying low. I get a much better sense of where I am going through the buildings easier. Although I think there's still a little bit more to do with the, like the fine tuning of the throttle there because I know it's a little bit jumpy so I might look at that. But anyway, that's hopefully coming up soon. Uh, and with with all these things, it's like, I think this is good, but I'll put it out to you guys and, and you guys can tell me. So that'll be coming up soon. Nathan, our 3D modeler, has been working on the crane to go with the part built building, which is looking just about complete. That should be uh, with me soon to, to build. The crane's going to be slightly different than it is in other sims. I think cranes look cool and you can dive down them, but I've always been a little bit confused that they never move because cranes, of course, have movement and their little thingy goes along their, you know, the thing with the hook. Uh, so I, I thought we'd at least have the option to have it moving and then it's it's more fun to fly around if it's got the possibility of hitting you when you're not doing anything. So as I said, that should be coming up soon. After that, I really want to get on with the idea of quad ball. Essentially, uh, think Rocket League, but with quads. We've, we've got the multiplayer stuff in there. We're gonna have the field of view stuff. Um, it's a case of building an arena, building some rules around it, and basically having, a, I think, a team of two against two trying to score in the goals. And most people that have come across the beach ball really like it, so the fact you can actually have a proper goal to try and score against might be cool. Um, so that will hopefully be coming up afterwards. Unless you guys think there's anything pressing which really needs to go in before that and you're desperate for, then let me know. Other than that, that's it. Uh, Steam's available. You'll find a link down there, as is GitHub. You'll find a link down there as well. I uh, hope that's helpful, and I will catch you in the next video and update and stuff like that. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.